The fog hung thick in the air, wrapping around the tall pines like a shroud, muting the sounds of the world beyond. It was a suffocating silence, broken only by the distant caw of a crow. Deep in the Appalachian Mountains, where the sun rarely kissed the ground, Sarah trudged along the worn path, her breath coming in ragged gasps. She had come to escape. Her life in the city was a cacophony of noise, heartbreak, and betrayal. But here, isolation reigned. But the mountains held secrets, dark and ancient, whispered among the trees. An old woman at the village told stories of the land's curse, lost souls who wandered too deep into the woods and never returned. They said the mountains thrived on despair, feeding off the vulnerable. As Sarah continued, a chill crawled down her spine, more than just the cold. It was as if something watched her. She shook off the feeling, blaming it on exhaustion and fear. An overwhelming urge to return surged within her, but the thought of retreating back to the life she fled made her press forward. Night fell suddenly, the forest morphing into a twisted silhouette under the pale moonlight. Shadows danced in the periphery of her vision, but when she turned, they were gone. An irrational fear clawed at her chest, igniting memories of betrayal that still festered. She had trusted him, her ex, the man whose cruel laughter haunted her dreams. He was the reason she had come here to forget, to hide. A rustling sound drew her attention, a harsh snap of a branch echoing through the trees. Heart pounding, Sarah peered into the gloom, but the darkness concealed everything. Hello, she called out, her voice trembling. The woods responded with an eerie silence. Pressing on, she spotted a cabin, dilapidated and ancient, its wooden frame sagging under years of neglect. She felt an inexplicable pull toward it, as if it were her salvation. But the air grew thick with dread, the atmosphere heavy with an unseen weight. A part of her wanted to flee, yet curiosity beckoned. As she approached, the door creaked open, as if inviting her inside. The interior was a mausoleum of memories, cluttered with dust-covered furniture and cobwebs that swayed like ghostly fingers. A flicker of movement caught her eye, a shadow darting across the far wall, just out of sight. She froze, the air thickening around her. Who's there? She called, her voice barely above a whisper. But the only reply was a faint whispering, unintelligible but laced with urgency. A sense of unease enveloped her, and her thoughts turned to the tales of the cursed mountains, of souls trapped within. The fireplace, blackened with soot, held remnants of ash that suggested recent use. Heart racing, she stepped closer, her instincts screaming at her to turn back. Then, a figure appeared in the corner of her eye, a gaunt woman, her hair long and tangled, skin pale as moonlight. You shouldn't be here, the woman rasped, her voice like gravel. The mountains will take you. Take me. Sarah stammered, fear twisting her stomach. What do you mean? The curse. It feeds on pain. It sees you, knows you. You must leave before it finds you. Suddenly, the shadows deepened, coalescing into shapes that loomed menacingly. Panic surged through Sarah. She turned to flee, but found the door slammed shut, blocking her escape. The whispers grew louder, a chorus of anguished cries echoing in her mind. Sarah! They called, voices familiar yet twisted, her mother's, her ex's, taunting her. You can't run away from your past. The walls of the cabin began to pulse, alive with the despair of the souls trapped within. She pressed her hands against her ears, trying to drown out the cacophony, but it was no use. They knew her fears, her regrets, each whisper a dagger in her psyche. Leave. Now. The woman screamed, her voice raw with desperation. With a surge of adrenaline, Sarah lunged at the door, throwing her weight against it. The wood splintered beneath her hands, but it refused to budge. The shadows coiled closer, their intentions clear. She could feel them wrapping around her ankles, pulling her down into the depths of her own mind, where every mistake lay buried. In a final, desperate bid, she turned to the woman. Help me! But the woman had vanished, swallowed by the darkness. Sarah felt the ground tremble beneath her, and the whispers became a roar, the figures closing in. Your betrayal has brought you here, they cried, the truth in their words slicing through her. It was her own fear and guilt that had summoned this nightmare, a reflection of her shattered soul. With a final scream, she threw herself at the door again, and this time it gave way. She stumbled into the moonlit forest, gasping for breath, the oppressive weight lifting slightly. But as she turned to run, she caught a glimpse of the woman standing at the threshold, a knowing smile on her lips. I warned you, child, she whispered before fading into the shadows. 
Sarah fled deeper into the mountains, the darkness chasing her, an ever-present reminder that she could never escape her past. The curse would follow her, an unseen specter entwined with her very being. In the distance, a crow cawed, the sound echoing eerily as the fog closed in around her, swallowing her whole. Story number two. The Appalachian Mountains loomed like sentinels over the small town of Harlan, Kentucky. Their ancient peaks were steeped in legends, whispers of hauntings and curses passed down through generations. As the sun dipped below the horizon, the mountains transformed into ominous silhouettes against a bruised sky, casting a veil of unease over the land. Maggie had returned to her childhood home after years away, her heart heavy with memories and a lingering sense of abandonment. Her father had died last winter and her mother's mind had slowly faded with him, leaving the old house teetering on the brink of collapse. Maggie's childhood was punctuated by stories of the shadows in the woods, tales her father had spun by the fire, warning her to never venture too far from home. With the darkness creeping in, she felt an unsettling mix of nostalgia and dread. The house creaked and moaned as if sharing its pain with her. She made her way to the kitchen, finding solace in the familiar scent of cinnamon lingering in the air from her mother's baking, but it was tinged with the bitterness of decay. That night, sleep eluded her. Every creak of the house sounded like footsteps. Every gust of wind felt like an unseen presence. As she lay in bed, she remembered her father's voice, low and steady, recounting tales of a woman lost to the mountains, a soul who wandered into the woods never to return. They take the vulnerable, Maggie. Stay close. The mountains know your fears. Just before dawn, a chilling cry shattered her restless night. Maggie jolted upright, heart racing. The sound came again, a mournful wail echoing through the trees. Against her better judgment, she grabbed her flashlight and stepped outside, drawn to the source of the sound like a moth to a flame. The air was thick with fog as she walked toward the woods, a sense of foreboding gnawing at her gut. Shadows danced among the trees, shifting and flickering, teasing her vision. She felt eyes upon her, an unshakable sensation that something watched from the depths of the forest. As she approached the edge of the woods, the wailing grew louder, resonating through the trees like a siren's call. Help me, please. The voice was sorrowful, pleading, a stark contrast to the dark energy that surrounded her. Maggie. It was a woman's voice, familiar yet distorted, echoing with the weight of grief. Help me find my way home. Maggie hesitated, dread pooling in her stomach. Who are you? She shouted, her voice trembling. I'm lost, just like you. I need you. Drawing a deep breath, she stepped closer, the flashlight beam cutting through the fog. Then she saw her, a figure shrouded in mist, her features obscured. The woman was dressed in tattered clothes, hair wild and unkempt, her eyes wide with desperation. Please, the woman cried, extending a skeletal hand toward Maggie. You have to help me. Maggie's heart raced. The woman looked like her mother, the same hazel eyes that once sparkled with warmth, now filled with despair. Mom, she whispered. But deep down, she knew this was not her mother. The figure drew closer, the shadows swirling around her like a tempest. You can't leave me here. You have to help me cross over. Panic surged through Maggie, and she turned to flee, but the woman's voice echoed in her mind, wrapping around her like chains. You can't escape your past, Maggie. I'm the reason you came back. Stay away, Maggie shouted, heart pounding. The air grew heavy, pressing down on her, making it hard to breathe. Suddenly, the ground trembled beneath her, and the shadows twisted into grotesque shapes. They surged forward, hungry and malevolent, the whispers of lost souls clawing at her sanity. You are part of this now. You brought us here. Maggie stumbled back, caught between the urge to run and the eerie pull of the woman's presence. I didn't mean to, she cried. I just wanted to forget. You can't forget, the woman screamed, her voice echoing like thunder. You must face it. Face me. As the shadows closed in, Maggie felt the weight of her fears bearing down. Her father's death, her mother's decline, the isolation that had wrapped around her like a noose. You're not real, she shouted, forcing herself to confront the apparition before her. In an instant, the fog thickened, and the world around her warped. The woman's face contorted into a mask of anguish, her form blurring and shifting. You don't get to escape. The mountains own you. With a surge of adrenaline, Maggie turned and ran, the cries of the shadows clawing at her heels. 
She sprinted through the trees, branches scratching at her skin, but the darkness seemed to close in with every step. As she burst into the clearing, she stopped short, gasping for breath. The cabin loomed before her, a silhouette against the moonlight. But it was different now, twisted and grotesque, the windows dark and hollow. Come back, the woman's voice echoed behind her, sorrowful and filled with rage. You can't leave me. Maggie's heart raced as she turned to face the darkness once more. I'm not afraid of you, she shouted, though her voice quivered. But the shadows whispered back, a cacophony of voices mingling with her fears, echoing the truth she'd tried to bury. The mountains knew her name, knew her heart, and in that moment, she understood. She was not merely a visitor. She was part of the land, part of the stories that haunted it. In a final act of defiance, she turned her back on the shadows and sprinted toward the cabin, the door swinging open before her, revealing a warmth that felt both inviting and terrifying. As she stepped inside, the shadows screamed, a chorus of anguish fading into the night. The door slammed shut behind her, sealing her fate. Maggie stood alone in the dim light, the echoes of the forest fading. She had escaped, but she knew the mountains would always call her back, drawing her into their depths, where the shadows whispered her name. Story number three. The air in the Appalachian Mountains felt heavy, dense, with the scent of decaying leaves and the acrid tang of moss-covered rocks. A cold wind howled through the forest, sending shivers down Chris's spine as he trudged deeper into the dense wilderness. He glanced at his phone, no signal, of course. He hadn't had one for hours. His friends, Greg and Lila, were only a few steps ahead, their flashlights slicing through the darkness like blades. Uh, the trail they were on was barely visible, swallowed by the night and overgrown with gnarled roots and thorny brambles. I don't like this, Lila whispered, her voice trembling. We should have turned back an hour ago. Chris agreed, but he kept silent. They'd come too far to stop now. All of them were feeling the pull of the old legend, the story of the cursed graveyard somewhere in these woods where the graves of the witch's children were marked by ancient, nameless stones. No one knew exactly where it was. People said it moved, appearing only when it was hungry for visitors. And once you found it, you wouldn't leave the same. Or leave it all. Just a bit further, Greg insisted. His face was pale in the moonlight, eyes wide with something more than excitement. We have to be close. Chris narrowed his eyes. Greg's obsession with finding the graveyard had grown stronger as they'd trekked deeper into the woods. It was almost like something was pulling him forward, guiding him, whispering to him. Chris tried to shake off the uneasy feeling, but it only sank deeper into his chest, like ice. They pushed on until they stumbled into a small clearing. The wind died suddenly, leaving the woods in an unnatural, oppressive silence. Lila gasped and pointed. There, on the far side of the clearing, stood a single stone, jutting out from the earth like a broken tooth. It was taller than any headstone Chris had ever seen, its surface covered in strange runes that seemed to shimmer in the pale light. We found it, Greg breathed, stepping forward. Chris grabbed his arm, holding him back. Don't touch it, he warned. We don't know what. It's just a stone, Greg snapped, yanking his arm free. What are you so afraid of? But it wasn't just a stone. Chris could feel it, the weight of it, the wrongness of it. The clearing felt colder, the trees seeming to press in around them, their gnarled branches stretching out like skeletal hands. Lila's breathing was shallow, quickening with each step Greg took toward the stone. Let's go, she pleaded, eyes wide with fear. Please, Greg. But Greg didn't listen. He placed his hand on the stone's surface, and the forest seemed to hold its breath. A low hum filled the air, vibrating deep in Chris's bones. Then, with a sick sickening crack, the ground beneath Greg's feet split open. Greg! Lila screamed, rushing forward as he stumbled back, falling to the ground. But something else rose up in his place, a dark, shapeless figure, its outline writhing and shifting as if made of shadows and smoke. No, Chris whispered, stumbling back. The thing loomed over Greg, who stared up at it, frozen in place. The shadow stretched, its form coalescing into the shape of a tall, thin man, face obscured by a hood pulled low. It leaned down, its voice a rasping whisper. You've disturbed the children's rest, it hissed. Now the price must be paid. Chris grabbed Lila's arm, yanking her back as the thing reached out, its long, bony fingers brushing Greg's forehead. Greg convulsed, his eyes rolling back as his mouth opened in a silent scream. Then, just as quickly, he went still. 
Greg, Lilla sobbed, struggling against Chris's grip. But it wasn't Greg who stood up. Not anymore. The thing wearing Greg's face turned to them, its smile stretching too wide, eyes black and empty. Run, it whispered, voice dripping with malice. Chris didn't need to be told twice. He dragged Lila away, their feet pounding against the forest floor as they fled back through the woods. Branches tore at their clothes, the darkness pressing in around them, but they didn't stop. Couldn't stop. Behind them, they could hear it. The thing that had taken Greg, its footsteps heavy and deliberate, always just a few paces behind. Faster, Chris gasped, his lungs burning. But no matter how fast they ran, the footsteps never fell behind. They broke through the trees and stumbled onto a narrow dirt road, gasping for breath. Chris spun around, expecting to see the shadowed figure emerging from the woods. Nothing. The forest was still and silent as if nothing had chased them at all. Did we lose it? Lila whispered, voice trembling. But even as she spoke, the air seemed to thicken, the shadows deepening. Chris glanced around wildly, his heart hammering, and then he saw it. Standing on the edge of the woods, just beyond the tree line, was Greg, or whatever wore Greg's face. It smiled at them, a twisted, unnatural grin. Found you, it whispered. Chris turned to run, but the road beneath his feet shifted, twisting like a snake. Lila screamed as the ground split open, the darkness reaching up like claws. Chris grabbed her hand, but she was ripped away, swallowed by the shadows. No! He lunged forward, but the road warped and twisted, the forest blurring around him. He stumbled, falling to his knees as the world seemed to spin, and then everything went black. When he came to, he was alone. The forest was silent, the clearing empty. There was no sign of Lila, no sign of Greg, no sign of whatever had taken them. Shaking, Chris stumbled to his feet. He had to get out. Had to. But, as he turned to leave, his eyes caught on something. There, on the ground where Greg had stood, was a small, smooth stone, covered in runes. Chris froze, a cold dread seeping into his bones. Slowly, he reached down, picking up the stone. The runes glowed faintly in the moonlight, pulsing with a sick, greenish light. And then, as he watched, the runes shifted, spelling out a single word. His name. A low, rasping chuckle echoed through the trees, and Chris dropped the stone wide, backing away. But the laughter only grew louder, wrapping around him like a noose. He spun around, heart racing, but there was no one there. You've taken their place, a voice whispered, cold and cruel. Chris's breath caught in his throat. He turned back to the stone, but it was gone. The clearing was empty, silent. He was alone, and then he understood. He hadn't escaped. He'd never escaped. He was in the graveyard now and he wasn't leaving. Story number four. The Maplewood Lodge sat isolated at the edge of a dense forest in the Appalachian Mountains, its once vibrant wooden exterior now weathered and gray. It had been closed for years, but the local townsfolk whispered tales of its dark past, stories of vanished guests and strange occurrences that lingered long after the lodge had shut its doors. Emily had come to the lodge for a weekend getaway, seeking solitude after a messy divorce. As she parked her car, the trees loomed over her like watchful giants, their leaves rustling in the wind, whispering secrets she couldn't understand. The air was heavy with an ominous energy, but Emily brushed it off, eager to escape the noise of her old life. The lodge creaked as she entered, the wooden floors groaning underfoot. Dust motes danced in the beams of light streaming through the grimy windows, casting an ethereal glow. She noticed a large stone fireplace at the far end of the room, the hearth cold and empty. Old photographs lined the walls, smiling families frozen in time, their faces now obscured by layers of dust. As night fell, the lodge transformed. The silence deepened, punctuated only by the occasional rustle of the wind. She lit a fire in the fireplace, its crackling flames offering a small measure of comfort against the encroaching darkness. Yet, the sense of unease persisted tugging at the edges of her mind. In the dead of night, she awoke with a start, the air thick with a chill. A low hum echoed in the distance, growing louder until it filled the room. Heart racing, Emily climbed out of bed and followed the sound, drawn to the hallway. The shadows seemed to stretch and sway, the wallpaper peeling as if in pain. The humming led her to a door at the end of the corridor, one she hadn't noticed before. It was slightly ajar, a thin sliver of darkness beckoning her closer. With a shaky hand, she pushed the door open, revealing a room shrouded in gloom. The air felt electric, charged with an energy that made her skin prickle. 
Inside, the room was empty except for an old ornate mirror hanging on the wall. The surface was tarnished, but Emily could still see her reflection staring back, wide-eyed and fearful. As she stepped closer, the humming crescendoed, vibrating through her bones. Then, as if summoned by her presence, the reflection shifted. In the glass, Emily's mirrored self smiled, a haunting grin that sent chills down her spine. Help me, it whispered, though the lips never moved. Confusion washed over her. She staggered back, heart pounding. What do you want? She gasped, struggling to comprehend the surreal encounter. You must release me, the reflection pleaded. They locked me away. You must find the key. Before she could respond, the room grew dark, the flames from the fire extinguishing in her mind, replaced by a feeling of being watched. The mirror flickered, and for a moment she saw a young woman in a vintage dress trapped behind the glass, her eyes filled with desperation. The next morning, Emily awoke, confusion swirling in her mind like fog. The events of the night felt surreal, as if they had been a dream. Yet, the weight of dread lingered in her chest. She ventured outside, hoping the fresh air would clear her thoughts. As she explored the lodge's grounds, she stumbled upon a dilapidated shed hidden behind overgrown bushes. Inside, dust-covered boxes held remnants of the past, old clothes, letters, and photographs. Among the debris, she found a small, rusty key. Its surface was cool and heavy in her palm, a sense of purpose igniting within her. Returning to the lodge, she felt a pull towards the mirror again. She approached it, heart racing, and held the key up to her reflection. Is this what you need? She asked, unsure if her voice would reach the trapped woman. Yes, the reflection responded, its voice hauntingly sweet. Please, release me. With trembling hands, Emily unlocked the mirror's surface, her heart racing. As the lock clicked, the glass shimmered like water, rippling under her touch. The woman's form materialized, stepping through the veil, pale and ethereal. Thank you, the woman whispered, her eyes filled with sorrow and gratitude. But as she fully emerged, the room darkened further, shadows swirling and twisting, wrapping around Emily like a suffocating fog. No, Emily cried out, backing away as the woman's face twisted into a malevolent grin. You're not free. You're trapped. Not anymore, the woman hissed, her voice echoing with the weight of countless souls. The shadows danced around her, hungry and alive, feeding off Emily's fear. You've set me free, but I will take your place. In that instant, Emily realized the truth. The lodge was a prison for lost souls, and she had unwittingly opened the door to her own doom. The mirror flashed with light, pulling her towards it as the woman laughed, a sound filled with dark satisfaction. No, let me go. Emily screamed, but the shadows enveloped her, swallowing her whole. The last thing she saw was her own terrified reflection, trapped once more, the key slipping from her grasp, lost in the depths of the forest where no light could reach. Outside, the mountains loomed silently, their secrets safe once more, while the Maplewood Lodge stood as a sentinel, waiting for the next soul to wander through its doors. Story number five. The trail was narrow, overgrown with brambles, and twisted like a serpent through the dense forest. Lila could barely see the sun through the thick canopy of trees, but she could feel the weight of the mountains pressing down on her. She'd heard the stories all her life, stories of things that lived in these hills, things better left alone, but she had no choice now. Her brother was gone. When they'd arrived in the Appalachian Mountains for their weekend camping trip, Lila and Matt had been excited to escape the city and disconnect. They'd set up camp beside an old cabin that sat abandoned on the edge of a clearing. The locals had warned them not to camp too close. Those woods ain't safe, the old man at the gas station had muttered, but Lila and Matt had laughed it off. Superstitions, they thought, just small town talk. It was their second night when the woods came alive with sounds. A low, guttural moan echoed through the trees, making the hairs on the back of Lila's neck rise. Then came the scratching faint at first, like claws scraping against bark. Matt, ever the adventurer, grabbed his flashlight and insisted on investigating, despite Leela's protests. Hours had passed since he left. The night seemed to grow thicker, the air heavy with an unnatural stillness. Lila waited by the fire, clutching a knife, her breath shallow and rapid. She called out his name, but her voice felt small, swallowed by the towering trees. Then she heard footsteps, Relief flooded her until she realized something was off. The steps were uneven, shuffling like someone or something dragging itself through the woods. 
Her heart pounded, and she could see the beam of a flashlight flickering through the trees. Matt, she whispered, more to reassure herself than anything. The flashlight emerged from the forest first, bouncing unsteadily, and then Matt appeared, or what was left of him. He stumbled forward, his face pale, eyes wide with terror, but there was something wrong with his movements. His limbs jerked unnaturally, as though they weren't fully his to control. A thin line of blood dripped from the corner of his mouth. Lila stepped back, trembling. Matt, she called again, louder this time. He didn't answer. Suddenly, his body went rigid, and his eyes, which had been unfocused, locked onto hers with a frightening intensity. He dropped to his knees and screamed, a sound so primal, so filled with pain, it shook Lila to her core. She froze, paralyzed by fear, as Matt's scream died into a wet gurgle. Then he stopped moving, his lifeless body crumpled onto the ground, face down in the dirt. Lila's mind raced. Was it an animal attack? Had he fallen from somewhere? But deep down, she knew. Something far worse had happened. The legends, the warnings, they weren't just stories. Something in these mountains was watching them, stalking them. Before she could process, a sharp, raspy voice filled the air. Run. She gasped, looking around wildly. No one else was there. The voice was in her head, cold and malevolent. She grabbed her bag and bolted through the woods, her legs pumping furiously, but the trees felt like they were closing in around her, the branches reaching out like claws. The world around her grew darker, though it wasn't yet night. With every step, the voice grew louder, more insistent. Run. Run. Terror gnawed at her mind as she stumbled through the underbrush. The terrain was unforgiving. Rocks, roots, and thorns tore at her, but she kept moving. She needed to get away. But from what? What had Matt seen out there? What had followed him back? A sharp snap echoed from behind her, and Lila glanced over her shoulder. A figure emerged from the shadows, tall, gaunt, its features obscured by the trees. It moved slowly, deliberately, as if enjoying the chase. Her lungs burned, her vision blurred with tears, but she couldn't stop. She veered off the trail, desperate to lose whatever was following her. But no matter how fast she ran, the footsteps behind her never wavered. The mountains themselves seemed to pulse with life, every rock and tree conspiring to trip her, slow her down. After what felt like hours, Lila stumbled into a small clearing. In the center stood an old stone circle, weathered and ancient, its purpose long forgotten. She collapsed at its edge, gasping for breath. The air around her seemed to thicken, the oppressive weight of the forest bearing down on her. Then the voice returned, soft this time, almost a whisper. You shouldn't have come. Lila's eyes darted around the clearing. There was no one there, only the stones and the stillness. But she felt it now, something ancient, something waiting. Her heart pounded as she realized the truth. This wasn't a random attack. The forest had lured them here. They had been chosen, and Matt had been the first. The ground beneath her shifted, and she scrambled to her feet as a figure rose from the earth. It looked like Matt, but his skin was pale, his eyes hollow. He wasn't alive, at least not in the way he once was. He reached out, his voice a guttural rasp. Stay with us, Lila. She backed away, but the circle of stones seemed to hum with energy, trapping her within. The ground quaked, and from the shadows of the forest, more figures emerged. People long forgotten, cursed to wander these mountains forever. Lila screamed, but the sound was swallowed by the night. Days later, search teams combed the area, finding no trace of Lila or Matt. The cabin sat untouched, the campsite abandoned. All that remained was the stillness of the Appalachian woods, as if nothing had ever happened. But deep within the forest, the stones stood silent, watching, waiting. And somewhere in the shadows, a voice whispered, Run. Story number six. The rain came down in relentless sheets, hammering against the windshield of the old Jeep as Sam squinted through the murk of the dark mountain road. It was supposed to be a quick weekend getaway, a few days to clear his head, to escape the suffocating stress of the city. His best friend Jake had suggested the secluded cabin up in the Catskill Mountains, assuring him it would be the perfect retreat. But as the narrow, winding path grew steeper and the night closed in around him, Sam started to feel a gnawing unease. Almost there, he muttered to himself, glancing at the fading directions scrawled on a scrap of paper. He should have been there by now. The last turn was supposed to lead him straight to the cabin, but all he could see were looming trees, their twisted branches clawing at the sky. Suddenly his headlights caught a flash of movement, a pale figure darting across the road. 
Sam slammed on the brakes, heart hammering. The jeep skidded to a stop, tires sliding in the mud. He peered through the downpour, but the road was empty. Nothing moved in the shadows of the forest. Just an animal, he whispered, trying to calm himself. But he couldn't shake the image. A pale, human-like form disappearing into the trees. He took a deep breath, gripping the steering wheel tighter. Focus, Sam. You're just tired. Pushing down his unease, he slowly drove on until, at last, a shape emerged in the darkness. A small, dilapidated cabin nestled in a clearing, its windows dark and empty. Relief washed over him. He'd made it. The cabin seemed older than he'd imagined, its wooden exterior weathered and warped. The front door hung slightly ajar, creaking softly in the wind. Sam frowned. Jake said he'd leave the place ready, but something felt... off. The hair on the back of his neck prickled as he stepped out into the rain and made his way to the porch. Jake? He called, voice swallowed by the night. No answer. He hesitated, then pushed the door open. The inside of the cabin was a stark contrast to the storm raging outside. It was eerily silent, the air thick and heavy. The only sound was the steady drip of water from his soaked jacket. Sam glanced around the small living room. Dusty furniture, a cold fireplace, and a scattering of old yellowed papers on the floor. A single lamp flickered weakly in the corner, casting long, wavering shadows. Jake, are you here? Sam's voice echoed in the stillness. He stepped further inside, scanning the room. There was no sign of his friend. He was supposed to have been here hours ago. Had he left in a hurry? But why would he leave the door open? He pulled out his phone, but there was no signal. Typical. Shaking his head, Sam set his bag down and moved to the fireplace. Maybe he just needed to get warm and dry off. He crouched down, stacking a few pieces of firewood. As he struck a match, a low, whispering sound tickled the edge of his hearing. Sam froze, the match burning down to his fingertips. He winced, dropping it as his gaze swept the room. Nothing moved. The whispering stopped. Great, now I'm hearing things. He forced a laugh, but it sounded hollow even to him. Shaking his head, he lit another match and kindled the fire, watching as the flames licked at the dry wood, casting a warm orange glow. But just as the fire flared to life, the whispering returned, soft, insistent, like the hiss of wind through a cracked window. Sam turned slowly, ears straining. It seemed to be coming from the hallway at the back of the cabin where the shadows pooled thick and deep. Jake, he called again, voice barely a whisper. The sound slithered closer, words forming just out of reach like something murmuring secrets to itself. Ignoring the chill that crept up his spine, Sam grabbed the small flashlight from his bag and inched toward the hallway. The beam of light barely pierced the darkness, revealing a narrow corridor lined with closed doors. The whispering grew louder, twisting around him, slipping under his skin. Who's there? He demanded, his voice too loud in the suffocating silence. He pushed open the first door. Nothing. Just an empty bedroom, the bed stripped bare. The whispering seemed to swell, mocking him, coming from everywhere and nowhere at once. Jake? Sam's hand shook as he reached for the second door. It creaked open, revealing another dark, empty room. But this time, something caught his eye. Scratch marks gouged deep into the wooden floor, leading from the door to the far wall. His throat tightened. The marks were fresh. What the... A faint creak sounded behind him and Sam spun around, the flashlight trembling in his grip. The hallway was empty, but the last door at the end was now slightly ajar. He hadn't touched that door. Heart pounding, he stepped closer, the whispering now a constant maddening drone. His fingers brushed the edge of the door and he hesitated. Something was very, very wrong. Every instinct screamed at him to turn and run, to leave this cursed place and never look back. But something else, a dark curiosity, a need to know, pushed him forward. He shoved the door open. The small, cramped room beyond was empty, except for a single wooden chair in the center. And sitting in that chair, slumped over as if asleep, was Jake. Jake! Sam rushed forward, relief flooding through him. But as he reached out, Jake's head snapped up. His face was pale, eyes wide and blank, mouth twisted into a grotesque grin. You shouldn't have come, Sam, he whispered, voice low and hollow. The words didn't match the movement of his lips, as if something else was speaking through him. You shouldn't have listened. Sam stumbled back, horror clutching at his chest. Jake, what? But Jake's body jerked violently, the grin widening impossibly. His eyes rolled back, and a wet, guttural voice spilled from his mouth. Now it has you too. 
The shadows in the room twisted, pooling at Sam's feet. Cold fingers brushed his ankles, and he staggered back, heart hammering. But it was too late. The whispering surged, deafening, voices crowding in his mind. The last thing he saw before the darkness swallowed him was Jake's face, contorted in silent agony. When the search party arrived three days later, they found the cabin empty. There was no sign of Sam or Jake, only a single chair in the center of the room, covered in deep, fresh scratches, and the faint echo of whispers drifting through the empty halls. Story number seven. The sun had dipped below the horizon, leaving the small town of Hollow Creek shrouded in a thick fog that curled through the streets like ghostly fingers. Julia pulled her jacket tighter around her as she stepped off the bus, the chill biting at her skin. It was the kind of place where secrets thrived in the shadows, and the townsfolk eyed her with wary glances. Julia had come to visit her estranged grandmother, a woman she barely remembered, who lived in an old creaking house on the outskirts of town. As she walked the lonely road, the trees loomed over her, their gnarled branches resembling skeletal hands reaching out from the dark. She could hear the faint rustle of leaves and the distant hoot of an owl, but it did little to ease the sense of dread tightening in her chest. Hollow Creek was known for its peculiarities, stories whispered in hushed tones about things that roamed the woods and shadows that moved on their own. When she reached her grandmother's house, the sight was even more unnerving than she had anticipated. The once vibrant paint was peeling, and the windows were clouded with grime, casting an unsettling aura. Taking a deep breath, she pushed the heavy door open, the hinges groaning in protest. Hello? Julia called, her voice echoing in the silence. There was no response. She stepped inside, the air stale and thick with dust. The living room was cluttered with antiques and trinkets that told tales of a bygone era, but it was the family portraits on the wall that sent a shiver down her spine. Each face seemed to watch her with hollow eyes, their expressions twisted in a mix of sorrow and warning. She moved further into the house, her footsteps soft against the worn floorboards. The dining table was set for one, the plates dusted over but strangely untouched, as if her grandmother was expecting her but had yet to arrive. Julia's heart raced at the thought. Something felt deeply wrong. As she explored the small kitchen, she noticed a door at the back that led down to the basement. It was slightly ajar and a cold draft wafted up, brushing against her skin. Compelled by a mixture of curiosity and fear, Julia reached for the handle. It creaked as she pulled it open, revealing a staircase that plunged into darkness. Grandma? She called, the word catching in her throat. No reply came. Taking a deep breath, she descended the stairs, each step echoing ominously in the silence. The air grew colder, and with it a sense of foreboding enveloped her. At the bottom, she flicked on her phone's flashlight, illuminating the damp stone walls and a dirt floor. The basement was cluttered with old boxes, rusted tools, and a strange assortment of relics that felt out of place. And there, in the corner, stood a large, ornate mirror framed in dark wood. As she approached, a chill swept over her, causing the hairs on the back of her neck to stand on end. The mirror's surface was murky, obscured by years of neglect. But as she leaned closer, she caught a glimpse of movement, a shadow darting behind her reflection. Heart pounding, she spun around, but the basement was empty. Get a grip, Julia, she muttered to herself. It's just the house settling. But the unease clawed at her, and she turned back to the mirror, staring into it. The shadows within seemed to swirl, forming shapes that whispered in a language she couldn't understand. Suddenly, the room felt charged, and Julia felt an inexplicable pull toward the mirror. She reached out, her fingers brushing against the cold glass. A jolt of energy shot through her, and for a moment, she saw something beyond the reflection. An image of her grandmother, frail and old, her eyes wide with terror. Julia, the voice echoed, desperate and pained. Don't look. Don't let them in. Panic surged through her. Julia stumbled back, breaking the connection. The shadows twisted violently, and a low, menacing growl resonated from the depths of the basement. Fear gripping her, she turned to run back up the stairs, but the door slammed shut, trapping her inside. The shadows thickened, swirling around her like a living mist. Join us, a chorus of whispers beckoned, filled with malice and sorrow. You belong with us. Leave me alone, Julia screamed, pounding on the door, but her cries were swallowed by the darkness. 
she felt the cold grip of the shadows wrapping around her, pulling her down, down into the depths of despair. Just as she felt herself being consumed, a bright light pierced the darkness. The door burst open, and a figure stood silhouetted in the doorway. Her grandmother, frail but fierce, clutching an old lantern that cast a warm glow around them. Get away from her, she yelled, stepping into the basement with a resolve Julia had never seen before. The shadows recoiled at her presence, whispering angrily. Julia, come here, her grandmother commanded, holding out her hand. Without thinking, Julia ran to her, and her grandmother pulled her close, the warmth of the lantern illuminating the darkness around them. Together they faced the swirling shadows, their whispers turning to shrieks of fury. With a fierce determination, her grandmother stepped forward, swinging the lantern like a weapon. The light burned bright, and as it touched the shadows, they shrank back, dissolving into the corners of the room. The air grew lighter, the suffocating grip releasing its hold. Go back to where you came from. Her grandmother shouted, and with one final burst of light, the shadows erupted, disappearing into the walls. Breathless, Julia clung to her grandmother, heart racing. What was that? What's happening here? Her grandmother's expression softened, but her eyes were clouded with sorrow. This house holds secrets, Julia. Dark ones. The shadows feed on our fears, our pain. I thought I could keep you safe, but they've been waiting for a chance. Why didn't you tell me? Julia cried, the weight of betrayal pressing down on her. I wanted to protect you. I thought you'd never have to face this, her grandmother replied, voice trembling. But now you know, you must leave this place before it takes you to. Julia nodded, her mind racing. The shadows had been more than just a trick of the light. They were alive and they wanted her. Together, they ascended the stairs, the air growing lighter with each step. As they emerged into the dim light of the house, the shadows retreated, whispering their rage. But just as they reached the door, a cold breeze swept through, slamming it shut. Julia spun around, fear clawing at her throat. The whispers grew louder, enveloping them once more. Julia, stay with us, they called, voices swirling like a storm. No, she screamed. But the shadows lunged, wrapping around her legs, pulling her down. She struggled, her grandmother gripping her hand tightly. Remember the light. Focus on the light. Her grandmother shouted, her voice breaking through the chaos. Julia's heart raced, and with every ounce of strength, she pushed back against the shadows. In her mind, she summoned the warmth of the lantern, the safety it had provided. Light surged through her, breaking the darkness. The shadows shrieked, their forms twisting and contorting in agony. Now, her grandmother cried, and they thrust open the door together, bursting into the night. The shadows howled, retreating into the house as the door slammed shut behind them. Julia collapsed to the ground, gasping for breath. The moon hung high above them, bright and unyielding. Her grandmother knelt beside her, tears glistening in her eyes. You're safe now, she whispered, but we must leave this place. It will never let us go. Julia nodded, her heart still racing. They climbed into the old car parked outside, the engine sputtering to life. As they drove away from Hollow Creek, the darkness fell behind them, but the whispers lingered in the air, a reminder of the secrets that lay hidden within. In the rearview mirror, the house stood stark against the night, the windows dark and foreboding. But, as they rounded the bend, Julia felt a strange sense of relief mixed with dread. The shadows of Hollow Creek would remain, waiting for the next unwary soul to wander too close. Story number eight. The Appalachian Mountains were a labyrinth of secrets and nestled deep within their embrace lay the small, forgotten town of Hollow Creek. Thick fog often cloaked the landscape, wrapping the town in a ghostly shroud. The locals spoke in hushed tones about the hollows, a part of the forest that few dared to enter, rumored to be haunted by spirits of the lost and cursed. As autumn descended upon Hollow Creek, Sarah returned to her childhood home after receiving word of her grandmother's passing. The old house was a relic of her past, filled with memories, that danced in the corners of her mind like shadows. With the sun setting behind the peaks, she felt the familiar chill creep into her bones, a sensation she hadn't experienced in years. That night, Sarah sat alone in the dimly lit living room, a flickering candle casting eerie shapes on the walls. The wind howled outside, rattling the windows as if trying to warn her. She pored over her grandmother's belongings, a jumble of photographs and trinkets, each telling a story of a life well-lived yet shrouded in mystery. 
Among them was an old diary, its pages yellowed with age. Curiosity peaked, she opened it and began to read. The entries revealed a life steeped in folklore, tales of the hollows of lost souls wandering in search of peace and a curse that befell anyone who entered after dark. Beware the whispers, her grandmother had written. They will call to you, promising what you desire, but only to trap you within their grasp. The wind howled louder, and Sarah felt a shiver run down her spine. She closed the diary, but a strange compulsion tugged at her. As the candle flickered, casting dancing shadows, she made a decision. She would venture into the hollows, if only to prove the tales wrong. The next morning, she set out with her grandmother's diary clutched tightly in her hand. The forest loomed ahead, its trees twisted and gnarled as if reaching out to ensnare her. The path grew narrow, the air thickening with an otherworldly energy that buzzed in her ears. As she entered the hollows, a deep silence fell, pressing in around her like a weight. The trees stood sentinel, their trunks twisted as though in agony. And then she heard it. A soft whispering, barely audible but insistent, like the rustle of leaves. Sarah, come closer. Heart racing, she hesitated, the stories flooding her mind. She remembered her grandmother's warnings. But the voice seemed to resonate with her very soul, promising solace and understanding. What do you want? She called out, the words escaping her before she could stop them. Release us, the whispers beckoned. We can help you. Fear and curiosity battled within her as she ventured deeper. The path wound in on itself, twisting and turning like a serpent. The whispers grew louder, morphing into melodic calls that resonated with her innermost desires. She thought of her grandmother, of the pain of loss that lingered in her heart, and of the love she had always sought but never found. Join us, Sarah, the voices sang, blending into a haunting harmony. We can mend your broken heart. Suddenly, the ground beneath her feet trembled and the shadows thickened. Faces emerged from the darkness, hollow eyes and twisted smiles, their features contorted in eternal anguish. We're waiting, they whispered in unison, their voices a chilling lullaby. Panic surged through her and she turned to flee, but the shadows lunged forward, enveloping her. The air grew thick, pressing against her like a physical force. You can't escape. You belong to us now. Sarah felt a cold hand grasp her wrist, pulling her deeper into the darkness. The whispers turned to screams, a cacophony of lost souls crying out for release. She stumbled back, fighting against the shadows, but they were relentless, dragging her down a path of despair. In a moment of clarity, she remembered the diary. With trembling hands, she fished it from her pocket and opened it, searching for the passage that might save her. The words jumped out at her, an incantation her grandmother had written, meant to protect against the whispers. By the light of love, I break this curse, she shouted, her voice echoing through the darkness. You have no power over me. The shadows recoiled, hissing like snakes, the grip on her wrist loosening. The forest trembled as if the very earth protested her declaration. No, the voices screamed, their anguished wails rising to a fever pitch. You will not leave us. With a final surge of strength, Sarah plunged the diary into the heart of the shadows, feeling the warmth of the candlelight against her skin. The darkness roared in protest, but the light expanded, pushing back against the suffocating gloom. The forest erupted in chaos, branches snapping and the ground quaking beneath her. As the shadows dissolved, Sarah found herself standing on the edge of the hollows, gasping for breath. The sun shone brightly, illuminating the forest, dispelling the darkness that had threatened to swallow her whole. But the victory felt hollow. She had escaped, but the whispers lingered in her mind, a constant reminder of what she had faced. She knew the hollows would always call to her, a siren song of lost souls. Though she had broken the curse for now, the burden of their pain would never leave her. As she turned to leave, she couldn't shake the feeling that the whispers would always echo in her heart, waiting for the day she might return when the pain of loss would draw her back to the shadows. Story number nine. The lighthouse stood tall against the backdrop of a tempestuous sea, its beam slicing through the darkness like a guardian of the forgotten. Barren Cove had always been a place of whispers and warnings, where fishermen spoke of vanishing boats and a tide that seemed to claim more than just the sea. As Amelia stepped off the ferry, the salty air prickled her skin, stirring a mix of anticipation and trepidation within her. 
Amelia had come to Baron Cove to settle her late mother's affairs. She hadn't been back since childhood, and the memories flooded in like the relentless waves crashing against the rocky shore. The cottage her mother had left behind was tucked away in a small clearing, the path overgrown with weeds, as if nature was trying to reclaim it. Pushing open the weathered door, she was met with the familiar scent of damp wood and mildew. Dust motes danced in the beams of fading sunlight filtering through the grimy windows. The cottage felt alive with memories, the laughter, the warmth, but also the shadows that had lingered long after her mother's passing. As night fell, the wind howled outside and the waves roared like distant thunder. Amelia found herself drawn to the attic where her mother had always kept her treasures. The stairs creaked ominously underfoot as she climbed, each step echoing the unease swirling in her gut. The attic was a cluttered sanctuary of her mother's past. Old photographs, broken toys, and faded letters all tangled together in a web of nostalgia. Among the relics, a wooden chest caught her eye. Its surface was intricately carved, the design of crashing waves and swarming fish pulsing with an otherworldly energy. With trembling hands, Amelia opened the chest. Inside, she found a collection of shells, each one polished to a glossy finish, glimmering in the dim light. But nestled among them was a small, tattered journal. She pulled it out, feeling the weight of generations in her palms. As she flipped through the pages, she realized it was her mother's diary. The entries began innocuously enough, recounting mundane, mundane days and family gatherings, but then they took a dark turn. There were mentions of the tide curse and warnings about the dangers of the sea. Her mother's handwriting grew frantic, recounting tales of fishermen who had gone missing, ships that had been swallowed whole by the ocean's fury. The tide knows, one entry read, and it demands its due. Every seven years, it takes back what is its own. A chill raced down Amelia's spine as she read the final entry. Her mother had written about a storm that was coming, a storm that would bring the tide to reclaim what had been lost. It was dated for tonight. Suddenly, a loud crash echoed from the shoreline, the sound reverberating through the cottage. Amelia's heart raced. She glanced out the window and gasped. The sea was churning violently, dark waves crashing against the rocks, surging higher than she had ever seen. Panic rose within her. I have to go, she muttered, knowing that her mother's warnings were not mere tales. She hurried down the stairs, heart pounding in her chest. Outside, the wind howled like a beast, and the air was thick with salt and foreboding. As she reached the beach, the world felt surreal. The waves swelled, casting shadows that danced along the shore. What do you want? She shouted into the storm, but her voice was swallowed by the roar of the sea. And then she saw them. Silhouettes emerging from the water, figures gliding effortlessly across the surface, their faces obscured by the darkness. The realization hit her like a wave, crashing against the cliffs. The missing fishermen, the stories her mother had whispered to her as a child, they were real. Amelia, a voice called, soft and haunting. It was her mother's voice, echoing from the depths of the sea. Mom, Amelia cried, stepping closer to the water's edge. The figures swirled, their features slowly coming into focus, and she recognized them. Men she had known, their faces twisted in expressions of longing and despair. Join us, they beckoned, their voices weaving a melodic yet chilling harmony. The tide is calling, and we have waited for you. No, she screamed, stepping back, her heart pounding furiously. I won't go. But the tide surged forward, the waves lapping hungrily at her feet. She felt an unnatural pull, as if the sea itself were reaching for her, beckoning her to step into its depths. Mom, help me, Amelia cried, but the storm grew louder, drowning her out. The figures in the water began to dissolve, their faces shifting into a cacophony of the lost, swirling together in a haunting dance. Just as the tide threatened to drag her under, a sudden flash of lightning illuminated the sky, and she caught a glimpse of the lighthouse in the distance. A figure stood at its entrance, an old woman, her hair wild and white, illuminated by the lighthouse's beam. She raised her arms, and the storm seemed to still, the howling wind fading into a gentle breeze. Run to the light, uh, the woman shouted, her voice cutting through the chaos. Amelia turned and sprinted, the beach shifting beneath her feet as the tide roared behind her. She could feel the presence of the lost souls reaching for her, their whispers now angry and desperate. But she pushed on, 
the lighthouse growing larger with each step. As she reached the door, she threw herself inside, collapsing onto the floor. The light surrounded her, warm and bright, shielding her from the darkness outside. She looked back through the window and the storm was furious, the figures writhing in the waves, shrieking in fury. But they could not breach the light's sanctity. The old woman stepped forward, her expression a mix of sorrow and relief. You've broken the curse, she said softly. But remember, the tide will always hunger for the lost. Amelia nodded, heart racing as she watched the chaos outside. She knew she had escaped, but the shadows of Baron Cove would linger in her mind, a reminder of the souls that still roamed the depths, waiting for their chance to reclaim what had been lost. As dawn broke over the horizon, painting the sky in hues of orange and pink, Amelia felt the weight of the night lift. But somewhere in the back of her mind, the whisper of the tide remained, a haunting lullaby that would forever remind her of the darkness that lay beneath the surface. Story number 10. The air was thick with humidity, and the scent of pine hung heavily around Sarah as she made her way through the dense forest. The Appalachian Mountains loomed in the distance, cloaked in a swirling mist that seemed alive, breathing with the forest itself. She had come to the old family cabin after her grandmother's funeral, seeking solace and answers to the mysteries that surrounded her childhood. The cabin stood at the edge of a clearing, its weathered wooden beams and rusted roof a testament to years of neglect. Sarah pushed open the door, the creak echoing in the stillness. Dust motes danced in the slivers of sunlight that pierced through the grimy windows. Inside, the air was stale, thick with memories, and a chilling sense of foreboding settled over her. She remembered the stories her grandmother used to tell, tales of spirits lurking in the woods, of voices calling from the shadows. Stay close to the cabin, Sarah, she'd warn. The woods have a way of taking those who wander too far. Sarah shook off the memories, dismissing them as childhood fears. She needed to be brave, to confront the past. As she explored the cabin, she found an old trunk in the corner, its lock broken. Inside, she discovered faded photographs and yellowed letters. Among them was a journal, the leather cover cracked and worn. Flipping through its pages, Sarah's heart raced as she read her grandmother's accounts of strange occurrences in the woods, the whispering winds, the chilling laughter echoing at night, and the shadows that danced just beyond the tree line. Each entry dripped with fear, and the final entry sent chills down her spine. They come for me at dusk. I can hear them whispering my name. They say I owe them something. Sarah felt the air grow colder as the sun dipped below the horizon, casting long shadows through the cabin. The weight of the forest pressed in around her, and she could almost hear a faint whisper, soft and insistent, calling her name. The hairs on the back of her neck stood on end. Night fell quickly enveloping the cabin in darkness. Sarah lit a candle, its flickering light casting eerie shapes on the walls. She sat at the old wooden table, the journal open before her. Despite her better judgment, she felt compelled to delve deeper into her grandmother's writings. The wind howled outside and she heard it, a faint voice drifting through the trees. Sarah, Sarah. It was soft, almost melodic, weaving through the branches like a ghostly lullaby. Her heart pounded in her chest. Could it be her imagination, or was it something more? Suddenly, a loud bang echoed from outside, and the candle flickered violently. Sarah jumped to her feet, heart racing. The wind picked up, swirling around the cabin, rattling the windows. Gripping the journal tightly, she stepped outside, drawn to the darkness that loomed beyond. The forest felt alive, the shadows moving and shifting, as if watching her. The whispering grew louder, now mingling with the rustling leaves. Come play with us, Sarah. It beckoned, enticing and ominous. She hesitated, instinct telling her to run, but curiosity held her in place. She ventured further into the woods, guided by the whispers. The trees seemed to close in around her, the branches clawing at her clothes as she pushed through. With every step, the whispers grew more intense, the darkness more suffocating. Then she stumbled upon a clearing bathed in moonlight. At its center stood an ancient oak, its gnarled roots twisted like the hands of the dead. As Sarah approached, the whispers morphed into distinct voices, soft, familiar, calling her name. Mom? Grandma? She called out, panic rising in her throat. The ground trembled beneath her, and the shadows coalesced into forms, faces emerging from the darkness, their features twisted in anguish. Sarah stumbled back, terror gripping her. What do you want? 
she cried, her voice breaking. One figure stepped forward, a woman with hollow eyes and a sorrowful expression. You've come to pay your debt, Sarah. You must join us. Join you? Her voice was barely a whisper. What debt? The woman gestured to the oak, and Sarah's heart sank. The tree seemed to pulse as if alive. Your family has always taken from the woods, but never given back. You must become one of us, or we will take what is ours. The air grew thick with tension, and the shadows closed in, whispering her name, begging her to join them. Memories flashed through Sarah's mind, her grandmother's fearful eyes, the stories of the forest's anger, the warning to stay close to the cabin. No, she screamed, the word tearing from her throat. I won't. As if responding to her defiance, the shadows lunged at her, clawing at her skin. She turned and ran, the forest shifting around her, branches snagging at her clothes. The whispers turned into screams, echoing in her ears as she stumbled back towards the cabin, heart racing. Bursting through the door, she slammed it shut behind her, gasping for breath. The shadows pressed against the walls, trying to seep inside. Sarah grasped the journal, flipping to the last page. Desperately, she scrawled her own warning, her plea for the next generation not to fall into the same trap. The whispers turned into a cacophony of voices, the house shaking with their fury. You cannot escape, they shrieked. You belong to us. With a surge of adrenaline, Sarah gathered her courage and threw open the window, letting the cool night air wash over her. I refuse, she shouted into the darkness. You will not have me. The wind howled and the shadows retreated momentarily, their whispers turning to wails of rage. Seizing the opportunity, Sarah grabbed the journal and hurled it into the night, watching as it spiraled into the woods. The shadows shrieked in despair, retreating further into the trees, the voices fading into the distance. As dawn broke, painting the sky in hues of pink and gold, Sarah stood by the cabin, heart racing, knowing the forest had not forgotten her, nor would it let her go easily. The weight of the family's secrets hung heavy on her shoulders, but she had taken the first step to break the cycle. The whispers had quieted, but in the depths of the forest, beneath the ancient oak, the shadows stirred, waiting, watching for their next chance. Story number 11. The dense woods of the Appalachian Mountains had always been a place of wonder and fear for the townsfolk of Fern Hollow. For generations, stories circulated of a mysterious figure known as the Keeper, a guardian who roamed the forests at night, shrouded in shadow, whispering to the trees. But those who ventured too far into the woods often did not return, and the Keeper's whispers were said to lure the unwary into an eternal slumber beneath the roots. Lily had heard the stories as a child, tales spun by her grandmother by the flickering firelight. Now, years later, the allure of the woods called to her. After the recent death of her grandmother, Lily felt an unshakable pull to reconnect with the past to seek solace in the whispers of the trees. On a crisp autumn evening, she set out, determined to face her fears. As she stepped into the forest, the air thickened with an otherworldly energy. The sunlight filtered through the canopy, casting intricate patterns on the forest floor, but the shadows seemed to stretch and warp, shifting with a life of their own. A shiver danced along her spine, and she paused, feeling a presence watching her. Just the wind, she muttered to herself, pushing forward. She followed a narrow path, the crunch of leaves beneath her feet echoing in the silence. As twilight descended, an eerie stillness enveloped the woods, the chirping of crickets fading into an unsettling quiet. Lily, a voice called, soft yet insistent, drifting through the trees. It was melodic, echoing in her mind, familiar and foreign all at once. Come closer. The call wrapped around her, tugging at her heart, her grandmother's voice danced in her thoughts, warning her of the Keeper's deceitful whispers. But the longing for connection was overpowering. It's just my imagination, she whispered, steeling herself against the lure. Deeper into the woods she went and the whispers grew louder, entwining with the rustling leaves. Shadows flickered in her peripheral vision, figures that seemed to dart between the trees, vanishing before she could focus. A sense of dread washed over her, but the yearning to uncover the truth pushed her forward. Suddenly, the path opened into a clearing bathed in silvery moonlight. In the center stood a gnarled oak, its massive branches twisting toward the sky, like skeletal fingers grasping for something beyond reach. The air shimmered, and before her, a figure emerged from the shadows, the Keeper. 
Dressed in tattered garments that blended seamlessly with the darkness, the keeper's face was obscured by a hood. Only a glimmering pair of eyes remained visible, piercing through the night like twin stars. Lily, the figure said, voice soft and haunting. You've come seeking answers. Her heart raced, a mix of fear and fascination. Who are you? She asked, stepping forward against her instincts. Are you the keeper? I am the guardian of the woods, the figure replied, voice echoing like the rustle of leaves. I protect what lies within, but you seek something lost, do you not? Where is my grandmother? Lily demanded, tears brimming in her eyes. She spoke of you. She said you held the secrets of the forest. The keeper tilted its head and a gust of wind stirred the leaves. She is at peace now, intertwined with the roots of this ancient oak. Her spirit lingers here, as do many others who have come before. Grief crashed over Lily like a wave. No, I can't lose her. I need her back. Life and death are but two sides of the same coin, the keeper replied, stepping closer. To reclaim what was lost, you must give something in return. What do you want? Lily asked, desperation clawing at her throat. Your fear, the keeper said simply, voice soothing yet unsettling. Face your deepest fears, and I will grant you a glimpse of her spirit. With a nod, Lily felt a surge of determination. She closed her eyes, recalling the moments of her grandmother's decline, her frailty, the way the light had dimmed in her eyes. Fear coursed through her veins, but she inhaled deeply, willing herself to confront the pain. Suddenly, shadows began to swirl around her, taking shape. She saw her grandmother, a younger version, laughter dancing in her eyes. But the image darkened, revealing the woman's frailty, the shadows of illness and despair. Lily, let me go, her grandmother's voice echoed, both, both comforting and sorrowful. No, I can't, Lily cried, fighting against the darkness that threatened to engulf her. But the shadows twisted, showing her visions of regret, moments she had not appreciated, words left unspoken. Face it, Lily, the keeper urged, its presence heavy yet supportive. Embrace the fear. Only then can you find peace. As the shadows tightened their grip, Lily reached for the memories, allowing the pain to wash over her. I love you, Grandma, she whispered, tears streaming down her face. I'm sorry for not being there enough. In that moment of vulnerability, the shadows began to recede, the darkness lifting like a fog. The keeper stood before her, still and silent, the moonlight illuminating its form. You have faced your fear. Now you may see. A brilliant light erupted from the oak and her grandmother's spirit appeared, radiant and free, glowing with a warmth that filled the clearing. Lily, she said, voice gentle and reassuring, you've grown so strong, I'm proud of you. Lily reached out and for a brief moment their hands touched, a fleeting connection that transcended the boundaries of life and death. But as quickly as it came, the light faded, leaving Lily alone with the keeper once more. Your fear was a prison, the keeper said, voice softening. You are free now, but the woods will always call to you. Do not forget your truth. As dawn broke, painting the sky in hues of orange and pink, Lily turned to leave the clearing, feeling the weight of grief lift slightly from her heart. She glanced back one last time at the keeper, who stood watchfully, a guardian of the secrets held deep within the woods. The path home felt lighter, and though the loss remained, she understood that her grandmother would always be with her, intertwined with the whispers of the woods. The Keeper of the Woods would continue to guard those secrets, waiting for the next lost soul seeking solace among the trees.